Hi, everybody, and welcome wherever you are around the world. We are glad to have you here today. Welcome to our free webinar on compositing for beginners. So if you're a kind of a new Photoshopper and you want to learn how to composite for landscapes and for portraits, which is what we're going to be working on today, I'm going to take you through the whole process and I'm going to give you some files to download so you can follow along. So the whole thing is like a hands-on workshop. But you're there, and I'm here at my house. Eric Kuhn is joining me over at his house. Hey, Scott. And uh, uh, we're all just kind of, we're, we're hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to learn compositing. We are going to learn compositing. The very first thing I want you to do is go download the practice files because we're going to do this together. So I made a bunch of files for you. I think it's eight. It's not a bunch. It's a, enough files to get us through this. So uh, go ahead and look on the address that you see on my screen here. This is where I'd like you to go and get those. So get those first because we're going to do this together and I want you to have the files because that'll, you'll really learn this great if we, if we can do it. It'll, we'll have to move at a slower pace, of course, but that's okay because, you know, we got nothing but time. So there's that. Yeah, there's So that. that's where you want to go. HTTPS colon slash slash kel.by slash compositing. So go and get those files, and I'm just going to talk to you while you're getting the files. Well, yeah, and Scott, we got, a, down we got a bunch of bunch of people joining in the chat. We've got Bob from the UK uh, saying hi. Uh, we got uh, J.R. Ewing uh, from Ocean View, Delaware uh, saying hi. Bushmaster from Colorado Springs. Mary yeah. from Monmouth Beach, uh, New Jersey. We got Steve from Wesley Chapel, Florida, right down the street from us. And then... Uh, Let's see, we got Loris from sunny Florida as well. We got Dylan from Minnesota. We've got uh, Kent from Michigan, Byron from North Dakota. We've got people all over the world. Let's see, we've got people uh, joining us over on the Facebook page as well. We've got uh, uh, Joseph from Canada, Karen from North Carolina, um, George from London as well. So we got a lot of people joining from the UK. Uh, we got... Sven from Germany. So yeah, again, uh, we got people from the um, Europe and the UK as well. Sweet. Well, we're very glad to have everybody here, right? Yeah. And now I see we just got uh, people from Ireland, from Canada, from Belgium, well, all over the place. Definitely. Sweet. So, well, we're so glad to have you here. Compositing. Yeah. Everybody want to learn compositing. Well, Poland. There's somebody from Poland. So there you go. All right. Eric's represented. All right, yep. real quickly, let me show that address again just in case you missed it of where to go download the practice files because that's really going to be very important in this class since this is our first follow-along webinar uh, in this series. So these webinars that you're watching are normally for Kelby One members only, but we're making it available to everyone while we're all stuck inside. We're all on house arrest around the world, so we're we're going to make the best of it. We're going to keep us moving forward, and when this awful virus is behind us, we're going to come out of the gate rocking. We're going to know new things and have new techniques, and we're going to set ourselves up for success, and we're going to need it. So <laughs> let's let's get started. So uh, first things first, I have some notes here, so I hope if I'm referring to my phone, it's not because I'm bored. Uh, all right, I, I first want to go through what we're going to do today. So w when you think of compositing, I think a lot of people think of like putting all these different elements together and creating some kind of fanciful thing. We're going to do uh, the kind of compositing we're going to do today is more what is done uh, commercially today, where you were, uh, we'll start with portraits and that's what we're going to start with in the class. We're going to be looking at adding textures and putting people on different backgrounds. Uh, it can be very expensive to go and do location shoots and things. So uh, we'll talk about how to make the most of that whole experience. Then we're going to do landscapes and do the same thing. We're going to do the type of compositing that is done in landscape photography today. And yes, a lot of people are doing landscape compositing, but I'm not going to stick an elk out in the field or any of that kind of stuff. It's a different style of compositing. It's more to what you would actually really do. Very few people stick an elk in a field. It's... It's a very small number. It's 14. It's 14 people that stick elks in <laughs> fields. But for, every, for everybody else, it's uh, we're going to do more, more commercial stuff. All right. Um, we're going to start with portraits. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you what the key to success to all of this is. All right. And it, when it comes to compositing, 
I know and you know that you've seen demo files where you have someone standing in a field and they're out in the forest or some crazy location and either Adobe or some plugin goes in there and they magically remove that person from a busy background. In real life, that doesn't happen. I mean, it happens on that one demo file that took them 2.4 months to find. But to be honest with you, compositing works best if you set yourself up for success. If you can simply do the couple of things I'm going to tell you to do, you will be compositing like you can't believe. And you're going to get the most of Photoshop's tools. But and when it comes to portraits, there's a very simple rule. When you're thinking of compositing someone, you want to shoot them on a neutral background. Not green screen, not white. If you can shoot people on a background and you want to have great success with all this, shoot them on a neutral background, a gray, a beige, a light gray, a dark gray, whatever, some nice contrasting color, but gray is the color that just works magic for compositing. So if I'm going to shoot somebody and you think, well, I'm going to, you know, I want to put them on a different background, I'm absolutely going to put up a roll of gray seamless paper. The good news about all this is gray seamless paper is wildly inexpensive. So you can get like a 54 inch roll, which is not ideal, but you can get it for like 20 bucks. If you want to go a little, if you don't mind spending a little more, you can get a nine foot roll, which is what makes your life easier. But all you really need, you don't even need a roll of paper. You can shoot it in a wall in your house. You can just go to a neutral wall and put somebody, you know, six feet away from the wall. You don't want them right up against the wall because then it adds shadows and all kinds of weirdness. So keep them six feet from the wall, shoot them with a, just a simple background behind them, and man, the rest comes together. So let me open up our first image. If you go to the folder of images that I had you download, open Portrait 1, and you'll see an example of what I'm talking about. So you'll see in just a moment, it's just that solid gray background. It does not have to be gray. It just has to be a neutral color. But if you're going to buy a roll of seamless, buy some light gray. <laughs> just buy some light gray. Now, there is a school of thought that says, don't buy gray, buy white. But, but Scott, you just said don't shoot on white. Right. Well, here's the thing. If you don't put lights on a white background, it automatically becomes gray. Like you really have to, they have whole classes online on how to light a white background. That's how hard it is to get a white solid white because it wants to be gray. So if you don't actually light it, it will be gray. And the further you move your person away from that background, it'll go from, you know, really light gray to medium gray to dark gray. And if you move them far enough away, your white background will be black because there won't be enough light reaching it. The other thing is I'm, I'm going to use, I'm using very simple lighting. I'm just using one single light. I had a 45 degree angle to my subject. So it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a fancy lighting setup. I like to keep it simple. So you're looking at a gray background. Let's go ahead and open this image. I'll go ahead and open it here in Photoshop. Yay, Photoshop. Okay. So this is where we're going to start. And yes, we're doing all of this in Photoshop. Of course, you, you can't do it in Lightroom, um, but you're already paying the 10 bucks a month. You're getting Photoshop in Lightroom. And you always thought, you know, one day I should learn Photoshop. Hey, today's that day. All right. That's step one. All right. We're going to start off with the simplest kind of compositing, which is literally to put a texture over the background. Now it's just a simple background, uh, but we're going to add texture to it. And you can do this in so many different ways, but where do you get a textured background? Well, you're a photographer. You could shoot one. You can go downtown. There'll be nobody there but you. And you can photograph, uh, you know, a, a wall, literally just some kind of a textured wall. You can photograph crunchy paper. You can uh, also, there's a million resources online to get backgrounds. If you're a member of Adobe Stock, Adobe Stock has literally thousands and thousands and thousands of high-res backgrounds ready to rock. Now, the background that I got uh, is just a free one online. If you just type in free uh, back, <laughs> free downloadable backdrop backgrounds, you'll find it. And, and uh, if you take the file name of this, so the second file I want you to open, let me go and get it. The second file I want you to open is called abstract ancient antique underscore 985. Found it online, 
search it on Google for free. If you take that address and type it in, does a copy and paste the file name into Google, it'll take you right to the free downloads page where I got it. There are, are thousands of free, people just put backgrounds up and say, here, download them. So if you don't have access to any of those, you know, you can always get them online for free. But that's where I got this one here, so let's go ahead and open it up. So we have two documents open. We have the document that you see on screen, which is a backdrop, I mean, excuse me, a background, and you have the actual image file here. Now, we are going to do just a simple copy and paste. We're gonna copy this over onto our subject. So first we have to tell Photoshop, well, how much do we want to copy? Do we want a little bit of it or all of it? We're going to select all. So you go up under the select menu at the top of the screen. You choose all, and you'll see it puts a little marching ant selection around the whole thing. So now we've told Photoshop, I want to copy all of this image. And then it's simple copy and paste. Command C, Command V on Mac, or Control C and Control V. We'll hit copy, move to the other document, and hit paste. All right, now, when you hit paste, that background appears on its own separate layer. If you look over here in the Layers palette in Photoshop, you will see the word Layer 1, and it is floating above the background. If you take the default tool, which is the Move tool, you can click and drag it, and you can see it is floating above her. It's like it's levitating above her. Now, if you've moved it around and say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that, which I do wish I hadn't done that, just go up under the edit menu and hit undo. Easy enough, just choose undo and it'll put it back where we started. Okay, all right, are you guys with me? We've opened the background image. We've copy and pasted it on top. I'll wait just a second for those of you hey, who are- uh, why, While you're waiting, Scott, I got a question for you because it sure, came in through the chat. Um, if somebody Absolutely. has Photoshop, if photo, somebody has Photoshop elements, how much of this can they do? Oh, almost every single thing. It, well, they can certainly do the first part. A little bit later, they have a slightly different tool. We've got some more modern tools, um, but they're going to have a slightly different tool in Elements. Some of this they're going to be able to do exactly like what we're doing right now. They can do no problem in, in Elements. The okay. second part is going to be like, oh, but then the third part, absolutely Elements, no problem. Yeah, so you could do 90, it just might be a different, at a certain point might be a different path, but 95% plus, right? 99% right. plus? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I think, well, I'm going to say 88.6%. Okay, 88.6, got it. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty close. All right, cool. so we've done this simple copy and paste step. Now, how do we blend this into the background? We're going to use layer blend modes. So if you go over here to the layers palette, you'll see the word normal, all right? If you click and hold on that, or just click once, it'll just pop up with this menu. Now, I don't believe the next thing I'm gonna show you that there's a live preview that was added to Photoshop. I'm not sure, I can't remember if it's in Elements 2020 or not. Uh, it might have been added to Elements 2020, I just don't remember, but, um, Anyway, I'm going to take you through. So in the latest version of Lightroom, when you move your cursor down this list, you're going to see previews of what happens. So what, what a layer blend mode does is it says, how does the layer that I'm on interact with the layers below? Well, it doesn't interact with them in normal mode. It just covers whatever's here, covers what's below it, right? It's covering it. And that little eye icon right there next to the layer, if you click on it, it hides it. So yeah, that layer is covering. All of these other ones, all of these other blend modes are different ways you can kind of interact with what's below it. So right now it's just normal mode, it covers it. But each one of these, watch as I move down the list. See how it interacts with what's below it? There are parts of it are see-through, different parts of it are based on darker colors and lighter colors and some make this image brighter and some make it darker and you can just move your cursor down this list now if you're moving your cursor down this list and absolutely nothing is happening it just means you have an older version of photoshop or you have elements <laughs> so that's that's all it means now i'm going to cut to the chase and help you out here most of the time when we do this technique where we're adding a texture over our photo you're gonna choose one of 
probably three blend modes anyway. So you don't really have to go down the list. You're going to probably, the number one that you're going to wind up using is called overlay. What's nice about it is it makes sense. I want to overlay this texture on that image. And you can see it did a great job of overlaying the, the image. Now, it also unfortunately overlays your subject as well. So, you know, it also gets on, on you know, right over your subject skin, but we're, we're going to deal with that next. Now, another version, so that's the, like the maximum, the most used one, but there's also soft light, which is just a softer version of the same one, okay? So this is kind of the high contrast version, and this is the lower contrast version. The other one that you'll wind up using from time to time with this technique is called multiply, and sometimes it works just perfectly. It doesn't look very good, I don't think, for this image. Well, it depends on what you want, I guess, but... Um, I think the one that works best is overlay. And I use overlay most of the time. So even if you don't have this technique that lets you see all the different ones, most of the time you're gonna wind up using overlay anyway. So yay you. So the next step in our follow along is switch your mode to overlay. And it should look like what you see here pretty much on screen where you have a texture and it's going over the entire image. It's covering the entire image. So here's the original, I hid the little eye icon, and then here is with our overlay uh, texture, our layer set to overlay. All right, you with me? Okay, raise your hand if you're, oh, sorry. Okay. Everybody seems to be with you, Scott. Um, I think okay, a couple good. things, uh, you know, for people is, this is being recorded, this will be in the webcast archive, you know, for people so they can follow oh, yeah. along later if they need it. Uh, and then also we've thrown in the chat a bunch of times the link to the to the download. So just go back through it, uh, download it, and you can kind of get up to speed. So Great. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, how do we get this texture off of our subject? Because it's going to look like, yeah, she's she's got a crazy texture over her. What we're going to do is it's a three-step process that is so easy. Step one is you're going to click the third icon at the bottom of the layers panel. It looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle, okay? It's the third icon from the left. It's called the add layer mask icon. Doesn't really matter what it's called. You're gonna click the third one anyway. If it was called fishbowl, you're still gonna click it. So it's the third one, two, three, just to the right of the letters FX click on that. That is step one. And nothing really happens to your photo. It looks the same. But if you look in the layers palette, there is now a white rectangle next to your overlay texture. All right. So that's the next step. Okay. Next, we are going to go and make sure that our foreground color, that's the little color swatch at the bottom of the toolbar over here on your left, all the way at the bottom of the toolbar, you see there's like a black and white swatch. To make sure black is your foreground color, simply press the letter D, as in black D. Anyway, it's just D. It actually stands for defaults. It brings back your default colors with your foreground as black, background as white. That's step two. Step three is very easy. You're going to get the brush tool. If you don't know which one is the brush tool, press the letter B on your keyboard, B as in brush, and it will switch you to the brush tool. And this is important, make sure you have a nice soft brush tip. Where do you find these brush tips? They are up at the top. See the little home icon? Then there's the brush. And then right to the right of that is a little round circle with an arrow to the right of it. That is your brush picker. And if you click on that little arrow, the brush picker appears. You want to choose a soft brush. So just click on a soft brush. And there you go. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take this brush. And if you, by the way, this is a really great shortcut to know for Photoshop. If you wanna make your brush larger, you're going to use the right bracket key on your keyboard, right? Every time you hit it, it's going to jump the brush up to the next larger size. If you want to make it smaller, you're going to hit the left bracket key. Where are the bracket keys on my keyboard? On a standard US QWERTY keyboard, they are to the right of the letter P. So look at the letter P on your keyboard on the right top, kind of. 
and then you'll see the left and right bracket keys. Left bracket makes it smaller, and the right bracket makes it larger. So make it a medium-sized brush, and you're going to paint over it. And as you do paint over your subject, it paints away that texture. And so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to paint over the texture. Now, let's say that you make a mistake. Whoop, I went way over there. I didn't mean to paint over that way. This is the beauty of a layer mask. This is why instead of using an eraser tool, we use a mask. Because if we do a eraser tool, it really erases. This is all temporary. If we make a mistake, it's so easy to fix it. All you're gonna do is press the letter X, all right, X. X swaps white and black as your foreground color. So look over there in the toolbar. You can see that my tool, uh, my, my foreground color is black. If I press the letter X, watch, it switches to white. So now I, that is the, whoops, I made a mistake keyboard shortcut. You can paint over the area that you didn't mean to paint over. And I also spilled a little out over the edges here. There we go, that's much better, okay. When you're done and you want to go back to finishing off painting your image, press the letter X, and now you're back and you're painting over it. Now, you're not going to try to paint over the edges. You're not going to go all the way to the edges. And people say, well, I never used this technique because I was afraid. How am I going to uh, get all those fine hairs on the edges? <laughs> this was a big awakening for me. But a, a friend of mine told me one day, he said, why are you worrying about the edges? They're little thin hairs. How much of that background do you think they're gonna hold? And I'm like, probably not very much. He's like, yeah, don't even worry about them. They'll blend in with the background. And I'm like, great. Now they're not blending yet, but they're gonna blend in a minute. And I'll show you how. All right, now you can also see there's a little bit of area over here where her hair still looks very reddish. So I'm gonna make my brush smaller, left bracket, left bracket, left bracket. I'm just going to paint over those large areas of hair kind of right there. Now, generally, when you put a background like this, oh, I think I have to switch to white up here. I think I spilled over a little bit up there. Yeah, I did. Now, generally, when I do this kind of background, I'm not going to leave it that dark. It looks kind of obvious. I would be lowering the opacity of this layer. So I'm going to make the, the background less intense. And when you do that, it's going to make the hair blend just fine. Watch. There you go. I lowered it to 67%. And now the hair looks perfect. It looks like you masked it like I'm like a boss. And it, it just works. And I, I've done this so many times, hundreds of times. It's been on covers of books. It's been all over the place. It is works like a charm. Now, I do want to give you a tip that will help to make sure that you didn't leave any part of your subject unpainted. The trick is this. You're going to hold the Option key if you're on a Mac. You're going to hold the Alt key if you're on a Windows machine. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to Option, and you're going to click right on that little, remember the white thumbnail that we made? Like, go up to the Layers palette, look at your texture, and to the right of it is that rectangle. Well, now it's half filled with white and half filled with black. Hold the Option key if you're a Mac user, the Alt key if you're a Windows user, and just click on it once. And it shows you the, the mask. That's what you've been painting on right there. And you can see I've obviously missed a couple of spaces. Now, this space over here on the right where her hair is, I don't really want to paint over that. That's background area. But I missed this whole area here and all this area on the bottom. How do I fix that now? Well, first, I need to hit the letter D to make sure. Or actually, I can swap my foreground and background colors using this little arrow key right there. Boom. And then I can go and say, whoops, I meant to paint over that. I meant to paint over all of this. And you make a, a really good mask. This way you don't miss any areas. There you go. And it looks like I probably missed part of her face there. It's not, not good. Okay. So that's pretty much how you clean up your selection and make sure that you got every bit of it. So there's none of it, you know, over her face. And then how do I get back to the regular view? Same exact keyboard shortcuts, same exact thing. You're going to hold the Option key on Mac, the Alt key on Windows, and just click on that thumbnail, and it brings you back. And 
There you have it. Bob's your uncle. Now, that is the super simple, easiest thing, but this is being done a tremendous amount today because it's hard and expensive to buy all these different, you know, backgrounds and painted backgrounds and stuff. Now you buy one background and the rest is all digital and you drop it on top and you can add all kinds of things back there. You can add chair rails and backgrounds. I mean, there's, you can go online and find a bazillion types of backgrounds to put behind your subjects. But what if you wanted to put like a photographic background back there? So that's the next level of compositing. Before we move on, Everybody with me? You guys all there? So, you ready to move um, on to the new project? So yeah, yeah, I think uh yeah, everybody's uh uh with you. There's some people that uh will they're going to have to watch the replay that we'll have because uh, it's going a little fast for them. So, um that's the only thing is some people are just they kind of they're going to need to go and watch it again. So, um that's something that will be available in our webcast archive. So, no problem. Yeah. There. So if I do any of this and you need to go back and do it, absolutely rewatch it, download the files and go at, at whatever speed you want. You can just pause it as you go. I do think uh, we do need to possibly, they were saying, take a break uh, because um, we need to check in on something. But um, do you want to tell them about uh, speaking yes. of masking? Yes, yes, I do. So when this Actually is hair. all over, yeah. When this is all over, I've got a free class for you. And we're just going to give you this class. It's a full-length class that I did. The entire class is on compositing, masking hair, all that hard stuff. And we're making it available for you. We're just giving it to you. There's no credit card needed. There's no, there's no nothing. You just go to the site, sign up, and you watch it for free. So I'm going to show you a clip, uh, a promo for the class. So you can see what it's like. It's the official trailer. It's not a promo. It's a trailer for the class because promo, it sounds horrible. It's a trailer. Watch the trailer for the class. I'm not trying to sell you anything because we're giving it to you. So watch that trailer. Whatever technical thing that we need to fix, we're going to fix. And then we'll be right back. So stick around and watch this trailer. I think it's like, you know, 30 seconds, maybe 45, could be 60. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here. I have a brand new class for you. It's called Masking Hair and Compositing Made Easy. And I'm going to make it really, really easy if you've ever wanted to learn compositing. If you ever wanted to learn the hardest part of compositing, which is masking hair. It's kind of the holy grail of the whole selection and masking thing. We're going to cover it in great detail. I'm going to give you four different techniques that work really, really well in different situations. And when you're done, you're going to have it totally covered. So check it out exclusively on KLB1. All right, we're back, and uh, Scott will be back with us in just one second. We're uh, working out something right now, but uh, as we're working that out, a uh, couple things, again, need to mention. Uh, the archive of this will be available at the webcast archive, so if you uh, you want to join and uh, watch that class that Scott just uh, talked about with the masking hair, you can actually go to kelby1.com forward slash free. Uh, there you can sign up for a free membership. If you're already a member or you sign up for that free membership, You'll be able to go to the webcast archive page. It's found over on the left side under the learn under webcast. And uh, once you get in there, you can go under the webcast section and all the all the previous webcasts are there as well. So you can actually um, see, I don't know if they can pull up my screen here, but um, there you go. You got all the webcasts that are in there. It's right over on the side under learn webcast and there's all the previous webcasts we've done so you can see there's 41 pages of webcasts so um as well as the classes um that's something that you can take advantage of and learn from um and that's where you'll find the archive of this webcast so again you go to uh kelby one actually one dot com oh look at i can't spell and forward slash free and right there, you'll be able to get started for free. So sign up, get started for free. Um, just create an account. Don't got to put a credit card or anything. Just create an account and you can join for free. So there we go. 
Hi. And Scott's back. Eric, you did a fantastic job of stalling. I'm sure some of you no noticed problem. that the power of my laptop was down to uh, 10%. <laughs> <laughs> At least my crew noticed it. I just had to run to get a power cable. Where would I find a cable? <laughs> I'm in my own house. That was no problem. <laughs> okay. So we are back. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. So let's remove this top layer. Let's remove our texture. Just throw it in the trash and get rid of it. Drag it to the trash can at the bottom of the layers panel. So just for those of you who just seen that for the first time, grab this top layer, click directly on the thumbnail, and there's a trash can at the bottom of the layers panel. That's for deleting layers. Just drag it to there. Uh, you can also just simply hit delete or backspace if you're on a PC. That will do it too. Just click on the layer, hit delete. All right, you guys ready to dig deeper? So we're gonna go a lot deeper. I wanted to like warm you up with an easy one. This next one's surprisingly, shockingly easy as well, but it is that next level kind of masking hair and stuff. Cause you know, her hair is obviously blowing there. It's very windy in the studio or we used a fan. I can't remember. Probably windy in the studio. Okay, are you with me? Here we go. So we're gonna start off by using some technology that is in Photoshop. I do not believe it is in Elements. So this is another place where Elements kind of splits off. But um, I want to make a selection of her. Now, I don't need a perfect selection. I just need a basic selection. I need to basically, you know, in Photoshop, if you don't tell Photoshop, I want to work on a part of the photo, whatever you do is going to affect the entire photo. So we have these selection tools that we use. They're all over here. And like one of them is a rectangle. And so if you make a rectangle, whatever you do is only going to affect what's inside that rectangle. For example, you go over here and make changes and you can see it's only going to affect what's inside that rectangle. So that's, that's what that's all about. So, by default, Photoshop thinks you want to work on everything, but there's all different kinds of tools. There are circular ones for making ovals, right? There's a tool that makes circles or ovals, and there is a connect the dots tool that you just kind of click, click, and it makes straight lines. And when you get back to where you started, you click, and it turns it into a selection. And then, there is just a freeform tool called the lasso tool. So if I wanted to tell Photoshop, I just want to affect our subject, I would, you know, I could trace with it along kind of, you know, it's not, a, not, it's not great quality here, but you get the idea, you'd trace. Well, this is the cool thing. So a while back, Adobe decided to use some artificial intelligence and machine learning, and they just poured into this machine all of these objects. This is what a banana is. This is what a beach ball is. This is what a potato is. This is what a person looks like. And it will look at it and go, oh, there's a person there. Do you want me to put a selection around them? <laughs> and it does it great. And here's the weird thing. You don't have to be connected to the internet. It's not one of those things where it sends your image up to the cloud or anything built into Photoshop. So all you have to do is you have to choose the right tool to get to it. So if you go over here and you choose uh, either the quick selection tool or the tragic wand, either one of those two. So it's the fourth tool down in the toolbar here. Well, in my toolbar anyway, because you can customize your toolbar, but choose one of those two. And then a button will appear up at the top in this options bar up here. The button itself is called Select Subject. All you have to do is click that button. It's going to go to that internal database of objects and go, that's a person. I'm pretty sure. I'll go ahead and select them for you. It's not going to select every bit of hair. That's what this trick is all about. But it's going to make a basic selection as if you drew it with, carefully drew it with the lasso tool. All you got to do is click it. That's it. So wherever you are, click it right there, right at the top, right under the word Photoshop, click on select subject, give it a few seconds and boom, look at that. Come on, that's pretty cool, right? This is something you used to painstakingly used to have to do, it's not anymore. 
All right, that sets us up for success because right now that's not a very good selection. It's a it's a pretty poor one, in fact. So what we're going to do is go to select uh, right next to it. The next button over is called Select and Mask. Now in Elements, I believe there is a tool called what's it called? It's not called Select and Mask. It's called something else, but it's something like that. I can't remember what it was called because it was used to be in Photoshop and then Photoshop updated theirs. And there's a, a, a still a version of it, I believe, in Elements called, oh, Refine Edge. That's it. It's called Refine Edge. So look for Refine Edge. Now, you don't have the Select Subject thing in Elements because it's Elements. This is a, it's a Photoshop thing. But uh, select and mask is what we're looking for here. When you collect, select, <laughs> when you click, that's the word I'm looking for, click. When you click select and mask, it brings up this cool window. And here's what it's showing you. Now, first off, I want to encourage you to do this next thing. It'll make your life easier. Go over here to the right side, and there's this thing called view mode, and it says view. I find it super easy if you choose overlay as your view, which has that, puts the red background behind it. So what it's showing you is everything that's red is not selected. Anything that's in full color is selected. So what you're seeing is, you see our hair still red? That's because it's not selected, right? The selection that Photoshop did, I and mean, it was, thank you Photoshop, it was handy but it was not uh, super accurate. So you see a lot of the hairs are missing. So by choosing uh, overlay, it's very clear to see the stuff you're missing. So that's why I use it. I think it works the best of the view modes. So that would be my first step is go over here to your view modes and choose overlay, okay? Now, now that we've done that, the fun begins, all right? So next, Let's do this. You're gonna get the second tool down. I don't know why it's the second tool down, because it's the tool that we use all the time. It should be the first tool, but it's not. It's the second tool. So go to the top left, choose the second tool in the toolbar. It looks like a brush with a filled in circle around it. Or I don't know what it's a circle, a half circle, a hand. I don't know what the icon is. It's the second tool, choose that one. And here's what you're gonna do. Oh, by the way, the brush resizes the same way as it does in other stuff, left bracket and right bracket. So here's what I'm gonna do. You see that little plus sign in the middle of it? It's got like a little plus crosshair. I'm gonna leave that outside her body, outside the edge, and I'm gonna paint so the, the, the circle overlaps her hair, right? I'll do it over here so you can see better. I'm gonna overlap her hair with the circle. And when I paint, I click and paint, look, it starts picking up the hair. Look at that. Is that incredible? It picks up the hair, come on, ridiculous. Look at that. And I'll even go in these gray areas and look, look at it picking up the hair. Come on, that's crazy. I have to go in there a little further to get that hair there, all right? And she's got a gray sweater on, but there's a little bit of hair missing down there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna trace with my plus outside. Don't want the plus to touch her. And look at, pick, look at it picking up those hairs on the side. This is such a cool tool. So that's it. I'll give you a second to kind of paint around, but that's it. That's how you're gonna get those. Now, there's more to this. So if it's not perfect right now, don't worry, because we still have some more steps that are gonna make it work really, really well. These are some secrets and stuff I've learned over the years. Uh, one of them is built in, but the other one, it's a technique I picked up years ago, and oh my gosh, it makes a huge difference. So right now, if it's not perfect, or if you accidentally paint over too much, there is an erase tool. If you make a huge mistake and start selecting your eyes and stuff, I believe it is the third tool down is the whoops, I made a mistake tool and you can paint over and paint it back in. So that's the third tool is the whoops, I messed up. All right, I'll give you just a few moments to 
keep painting over the hair and and you're probably like i can't believe this is even working but it is it's crazy it is it's magical right it is it's magical when people talk yeah. about photoshop magic is this type mm -hmm. of stuff yeah oh yeah by the way our subject here is kristen ellis and she is a model based in tampa but that's not her main gig. Her main gig is she's a really good photographer. She is an ace photographer and she's got paying clients and the whole nine yards. I mean, she's, she rocks it. She's really, really good. And Scott, yeah, a lot of people, you know, um, really appreciative of these webcasts. Um, I know we've been doing these for members for forever and we do it for the public as well. I actually went back and, and calculated while we were sitting here and uh, we actually, in our webcast archive, ha archive have 483 different webcasts Woo! in our member archive. Wow. So, yeah. Sweet. So, yeah. All right. We ready to move on, everybody? How about you, Eric? You ready to move on? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. So we're going we're gonna to click a button. We're just going to turn on a checkbox that actually helps quite a bit. We're going to scroll down here. And at the very bottom of this right panel, there is a checkbox called decontaminate colors. Now, up until this point, I'm using all of the default settings over there. So there's all the defaults. There's I haven't messed with those sliders. And honestly, I don't usually have to. I do my 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 masking just like you see here. Keep it easy and simple and it'll it'll work. Oh, I do want to give you one more important thing before we click this checkbox. If at any point all of a sudden you hear dogs barking like they are losing their mind. That means that Amazon tried to deliver a package. At that point, three dogs, two Belgian Tavernes and a tiny little white cotton detoulier explode like candy and go running to the front door. Could happen. We're expecting a delivery. Could be. Yeah, and and, and I'll I'll make that, I will make that same uh, disclaimer, except mine are just two... Uh, miniature poodles that will act like they are 700 pounds and will tear your tear your throat out um, right uh, but before we get to that there is a couple questions here because i think it just clearing it up um uh sure. is um um don is asking is there a reason that my entire image is selected by default in, in um is there a way to turn that off where it selects the mask right away well, remember, you have to make a selection first before you go into this dialog. Mm -hmm. So if you're seeing yep. red over your whole photo, you didn't make a selection. Remember how we clicked that button that said select yep. subject? If you didn't do that, your whole subject will be red. Now, if you don't have select subject, you're going to have to go old school. Go get the lasso tool and trace around your person first and then come into this window but it won't look right if you don't start with a selection. So start with a basic selection first. Of course, if you have the latest version or a recent version of Photoshop, because that select subject's been in there for about 18 months, Eric, is that about right? Two years, something like yeah, that? Yeah, about right, two years, yeah, yeah. about two years. So, so if you have a version of Photoshop from the last two years, just use select subject. If you don't, then you're going old school. You're going to get the lasso tool and you're just going to trace and you don't have to make a perfect selection. Just get a reasonable selection. Once you have your person selected, even with just a reasonable selection, then you come here to select and mask. So if you're seeing that, that's the issue. Uh, another question, Eric? Yeah. I mean, I think that's what it is. Is some people are on other versions of Photoshop or again, going through those steps. Cause like somebody's saying, there's nothing above edge detection on the right menu. Um, um, yes, that, that, there may not. Edge, yeah, the uh, there's there's if you're using an older version of Photoshop. Yep. Uh, yeah, so if you have an older yeah. version, and that's a but that's refined thing, edge works really very well too. By the way, it works the same way. The refined edge, even though you don't have this big fancy window, mm -hmm. you still have the brush. You still have the same stuff. It, it, all the features are there. It just doesn't look. They put a new fancy interface on it. It's been in Photoshop for. 10 years, eight years. Mm -hmm. So you got it. It's in there. <laughs> you just got to find it. It is there. It's just called refine edge on older versions of Photoshop and select and mask on newer versions of Photoshop. Hope that helps. 
All right, you ready to click the special button? That is also in Refine Edge as well, but I think it works better in Select and Mask here, which is Decontaminate Colors. Watch the screen when I click Decontaminate Colors. Watch how it kind of fills in. Watch. I'm going to turn it on. Did you see that? I'm going to toggle it on and off a few times so you can see. Watch. It really builds out the edges. Like it like thickens the hair and everything. I'm hoping you're seeing that. Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay. All right. Now, lastly, it says output to right below that. It says, okay, when we're done with this, what do you want? I choose new layer. Now, when you get more advanced, you might want to choose a layer mask and all this stuff, but we're like, we're just doing this for the first time. Just choose a new layer. And what you're going to wind up with is her with a transparent background. So you'll see a checkerboard behind her of white and gray. That's how Photoshop tells you what's transparent is that white and gray area. So just use new layer. So all we've done, just to recap, we painted around the edges using the second tool in the toolbar. We turned on the decontaminate checkbox and we set our output, which is, you know, when we're done, what happens? Make a new layer. That's it. We did three things. Traced around the subject, turned on decontaminate colors, and then we're going to output to a new layer. When you've got all that done, click OK. And we'll click OK. And there you have it. It did its job. Now, you're probably noticing a couple of things, but it's OK. We're going to fix them. You're probably noticing that part of her hair up here is see-through, which is not ideal. A little bit right there, too. A little bit on her shoulder. Not ideal. But that's just the way it works. No, we haven't gotten to the super mega trick. That gets us to here. Okay? Here's what's going to fill in that stuff. All you're going to do is going to sound really simple and stupid, but it works like a charm. You're going to duplicate this layer two times. And what's going to happen is the pixels behind are going to fill in and it's going to make the hair look stronger. It's going to fill in those areas. And if it doesn't, I still have another trick for you. Well, let's do that. We're going to duplicate the layer twice. What's the easiest way to do this? On a Mac, you would press Command J as in Juliet. On a Windows, you would press Control J as still in Juliet. J, Control J on Windows, Command J on Mac, and watch what it does. Watch the image when I do, I'm gonna press it twice, so I'm gonna go Command J, Command J. It's gonna make two layers, two duplicates of this layer. Command J on Windows, you'd be Control J, Control J. Ready, watch. One, two, done. Look, look, look how it filled in her hair. Look how strong it made all the other hair. I'm going to hide those layers so you can see what I just did. Watch. That's before. Here's the first layer. And there's the second layer. It filled in all the gaps, made the hair look really strong. It just builds up those pixels. from. It's, it's really good. It's a good thing. That's it. Duplicating the layers. Bang, bang. Now, don't forget, we're giving you that class, and it goes into even more detail than I'm doing here but this will get you going, okay? Now, at this point, she is on a transparent background. I could drop her onto other backgrounds, but I, if I can, I prefer to drop the background in here. Why? Here's why. Because there is a brush over here in the toolbar called the history brush. And here's why I like to keep it in this same document. I don't always do it, but if I can, I'd prefer to add a background behind her here rather than taking her to a different background. Why is that? Here's why. I want you to think of the history brush as ready, undo on a brush. Undo on a brush. So if there was an area that was still falling out or something was wrong, I can just grab that brush 
and paint, and it will paint the photo back exactly how it looked when I first opened it. It's undo on a brush. As long as I stay in this document, I'll always be able to bring her, the original her back if any part of it doesn't work. If I copy and paste her over to another document, I can't use the history brush anymore. That's it. All right, let's move on. So we now have the duplicates, the two duplicate layers of her. I really uh, want to put them all together in one layer. I don't need three layers. So here's, there's a little easy way to do it. Hold the shift key and click on both of the other layers. One, two. So they're all highlighted. So all three of my layers are highlighted. Again, if you're just seeing that for the first time, uh, we're on the top layer. Hold the shift key and just go click on the second layer and click on the third layer over in the layers panel. Okay? I want to put them into one single layer. There's a keyboard shortcut that'll do it. It's, it merges them into one. The keyboard shortcut is Command E as in Edward or Control E if you're on Windows. Watch. That's it. Now they're one layer. Easier to work with one layer than all three of those, right? Let's go get our background image. Let's go get our background image. We'll go under the file menu. We'll choose open. And the background image we're going to choose is this restaurant photo. Now, you might notice the gentleman that you see here. That is my friend, Dave Clayton. He's not just a friend. Why? He's an epic British lord. We're going to use this picture of Dave when I was over there last year. Poor Dave. Sorry, let's take that off. We're going to place our subject over this background. How do we do that? Well, actually, I'm sorry. We're going to put this background here. Remember how we did this earlier with the tech, with this uh, background texture? Select all. So you're telling Photoshop, I want all of this image. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to our portrait photo, click on the portrait tab, and hit paste, a simple copy and paste. Almost looks like the same person, doesn't it? Okay. Now, usually the background appears behind your subject rather than in front of them. So go to the layers panel, and you'll see where you pasted it. It's named layer one. You want to put the background behind the transparent version of your subject. So you're simply going to drag it straight down in the layers panel. Watch, click, hold, and drag. And when it gets behind there, see how a little blue line shows up? Did you notice that? Watch when I click, watch a little blue line appear. When you see it, let go. And now she's in Wagamama, which is a restaurant in London. And there are also other places as well. First one I ate was Frank Duerhoff took me to one in Amsterdam and I fell in love with it. Okay, there's something horribly wrong here. The color is not bad, like the tones kind of match, right? However, the light source is the window and she's facing the wrong way. We're going to fix that. This is a classic mistake that people make when they do compositing is they don't look at the light that's there. The light's over here on the window on the left side of the image, but the, somehow the light is coming from over there. This is an easier fix than you think. Click on your portrait person. Go to Command T on Mac or Control T on Windows. That brings up free transform. So Command T on Mac for transform. Control T on Windows brings up that. And then we are going to flip her horizontally. How do you do that? You right click on the image anywhere inside this square and a list of things that you can do pops up. You can resize it, rotate it, skew it, perspective, warp. All those things would be an unfortunate thing to do to our subject. We, however, are going to go down here and choose flip horizontal. When you do that, it is going to flip her the other way so the light is on the right side of her face. That's it, that's all we're doing. Like that. 
Look how good the hair looks, right? And then we'll move her a little closer to the window so you don't see Dave back there. Or Dave's hands probably right, maybe right there. There we go. All righty. So that is just a simple way to get you going. And of course, the class I'm going to give you goes into if our, our tones match. We're pretty lucky here that you put her in there and, and the colors of the room are warm and the, her skin tone is warm. So it, it actually looks okay. Uh, however, it would be uncomfortable for her sitting in that booth. No, but um, uh, outside of that, in the class, I go into what to do when the colors don't match. So that class is gonna help you a lot because I have a whole section on how to make the colors match, how to make the light match and things like that. So that's more of what goes into that class. But I, wanna, I do want to get you this far into it. And then I want to, let's move on to landscape so we can kind of learn some techniques. It's completely different techniques for landscape than for portrait, but uh, still easy, still really easy. Well, actually, I don't want to say completely different techniques, somewhat different techniques. All right. So, so we get uh, there. Oh, I do want to give you one more little tip. If you notice there's a little, it's just not really bad in this portrait, in this picture, but in some pictures you will notice there's a little, little white fringe on the edges of your subject. You just see a little pixel or two that didn't quite make it over. There is a good way to get rid of them. You go under the layer menu all the way to the bottom and choose defringe. You know what that does? Removes fringe. <laughs> it does it really well though. It's surprisingly good. It's a very, very good feature tool. And uh, when it comes up, it's very a non. It's the most non-intimidating box you'll ever see. How many pixels do you want? Oh, let's go for two. I usually use one or two. And and how do I know which one to use? If one doesn't look good, use two. All right, click OK. And it just takes that little one little pixel off the edge. And in in some cases it works miracles. In some cases, like here, you don't see a whole lot. But there you go. So, so Scott, that is, um, our, I'm sorry, Eric. Yeah. So Scott, um, you know, I think one of the things that's coming up, and boy, uh, our connections or my connection is really bad right now. Um, <laughs> yes, is, it is. Uh, uh, so the the question is um, uh, updating Photoshop. Like people are saying, well, uh, we should have, you know, updated Photoshop before. I, I really think the things, looking at the tools you're using, these have been in Photoshop for a long time, right? Yeah, this is I nothing mean, new at least, here. So, I mean, Two years that comes minimum. back to, yeah, so if you're not seeing these, you haven't updated Photoshop in years. Um, yeah, in now, years. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a case for updating Photoshop more often because you get these cool features. Um, but that's the thing is all, everything he's showing has been, if you're not seeing that, you really – have not updated Photoshop in a while. So. Yeah, and, and if you need to update Photoshop, go under your help menu, and the very last thing on the menu is called updates, and it will go and check for updates. But the things that I'm showing you, um, I don't think there's, the only thing that I've shown you in here that is, there's nothing within two years right? This is all, everything I showed you today mm -hmm. has been in Photoshop a minimum of two years. Select and Mask has been in Lightroom or Photoshop, excuse me, for eight to 10 years, but it was called Refine Edge before. And they just put a nicer interface on it. They made it its own floating window um, instead of just a pop-up palette. Um, but it's the same, it works the same way. It uses the same brush. It's got the same sliders in the same order that do the same stuff. So they just put a prettier interface on it. So if you were watching today and you have a version of Photoshop made within the last 10 years, the single only thing that was not in Photoshop seven years ago was the, the uh, select subject button. For those folks that don't have that, you're using a seven year old, you're using like Photoshop CS2, um, you would have to take the lasso tool and trace around. You can still do everything I did. 
You're just going to have to do the one thing yourself. You're going to have to trace that area yourself. Outside of that, there you go. You guys ready to move on to landscape? All right, let's close all these images. And let's open up a landscape image. So let's start with the rock tree. So it's a it's a tree in, in the rocks. There. <laughs> it's rock tree. So go ahead and open that. That's uh, step one. And as you can see, as, as Eric and I know all too well from our trips out west, sometimes out in Arizona and Utah and that whole great, amazing area, you can go days and days and never get a cloud. Yeah. <laughs> One of the yeah. most common things today is to do a sky replacement. I resisted this for many, 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 many years, and I just didn't do it. And I would go, like Eric and I did, we'd go out to Arizona for three days shooting. you come back and you wouldn't show a single photo to anybody. You bought airfare, hotel, food, all these expenses, got up oh, at yeah. dawn every day, shot at sunset, never saw a cloud ever, and you don't ever show the photos. And so what I realized was I'd be talking to some of these like legendary, you know, landscape photographers who were acquaintances or friends or whatever, and I would say, Man, I love that picture of wherever. Man, your sky was amazing. And they would say to me, oh, I, I dropped that sky in. What? What? They're like, well, yeah. You mean to tell me you would go someplace and shoot for days and never show the photo because you, you didn't have the right sky? And I'm like, yes, that's what I would do. They're like, you're stupid. And at that moment, I realized, I was stupid. I'm the last one in the world not doing it. And so now I do it here and there, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. There's a number of ways to do it. There's even a plugin. I'll, I guess I'll show the plugin too. There, there's a plugin that's ridiculous at it. But anyway, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to do it. It is so easy that it will make you, re, it will make you question everything. All right, let's open up a sky. I've got a sky for you. Let's open up Utah sky. So that way, you know, it's like kind of the same. One of those rare days where there was a good sky, ugly landscape, but a good sky. Open that. Now I'm going to give you a trick that I'm not very proud of, but it works. I want to select as much of this sky as is possible. So I go and I get the rectangular marquee tool. Okay. It's been in Photoshop since 30 years now, <laughs> 30, 31 years going on. And I want to say, I want this much of the sky and you're going to drag it out and select as much of the sky as you can. And you're thinking, I wish I could get more sky, but that, Stupid rock is sticking up, right? Stupid rock. Here's what we do. We're going to go draw a rectangle around that stupid rock. We're going to go under the file menu to fill. By default, it's going to choose the words content aware, which means it's going to look around and it's not going to fill that with black or white or gray, which is what it did, you know, for many, many years, it's going to look around and say, can I find something more reasonable to put in there? And you click OK. And it does that. Look, more sky. <laughs> I'm sorry you're having to see this, this dirty side of landscape photography, but somebody has to tell you so. Why not me? Okay. It is incredible. It is incredible, Scott, how many people uh, we uh, I definitely found out in the last few years that this is all they do. Oh, like yeah. You wonder about their skies and they're like, how do you travel get beautiful photographers? It's like, no, it's all fake. Yeah. It's famous travel photographers, famous landscape photographers, Instagrammers with millions of followers dropping in skies left and right. Okay. Let's go select as much of the sky as we can, which is more than we selected before, and do a simple ready, 
copy. It's only going to copy the area inside my rectangle. So copy, go to the other photo and paste. It's not going to fully cover it, but it's, you know, and it's, again, it comes in floating over the background. So if I move it right, it floats. And I'm going to hit undo so it kind of puts it back where it was. So how am I going to make it fit my rock tree? I'm going to use free transform again. So command T on Mac or control T on Windows. And I'm just going to stretch it to make it fill that area. There we go. Close enough. When you're done, hit return or the enter key and it locks in your transform. Okay. Now, this is a very bad looking composite. It does not look realistic. It's covering the poor tree on the layer below it. How do we get these to blend? Are you guys ready? Are you sitting down for this? Now, you could just go and choose a blend mode like we did before, right? Well, that looks kind of funky because you got green in the tree now. You could try maybe multiply. But you're going to have to go and mask and paint out that whole tree. That one doesn't look too bad. Except for there's some weird stuff happening on the rocks. I got a better way. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to go to the layers palette. And you know the little sky thumbnail, a little thumbnail over here in the right corner? You're going to double click right on it. Double click directly on the thumbnail for the sky. And it brings up this window with a bunch of scary looking stuff. Don't worry, we're gonna use very little of it. <laughs> we're gonna to go to the very bottom to this thing called underlying layer and it's this slider. All right, you ready for the magic to be happening? Here we go. We're gonna drag this to the right and you'll see the tree start to come through, but it's not gonna look good. It's gonna look kind of cruddy, but you're gonna drag it away anyway. Get it most of the way, then stop, and we're done. No, no, it looks terrible. Here's where it, it comes together. Once you get it like 80% done and it looks all awful and everything, you're gonna hold a magical key. You're gonna hold the Option key on a Macintosh. This would be the Alt key on a Windows machine. And you're gonna drag the same slider, but the slider is literally going to split in two. It's going to split, and that split makes it smooth now. So hold the Option key if you're on a Macintosh, the Alt key if you're on a Windows. Grab it, and it splits in two. Whoop, make sure you grab the right side. Ooh, look, it splits. And look, it's all coming together. What? Just keep dragging until it looks good. And... Maybe somewhere in there. Now you can also go back and grab the left side now that it's split in two. And see if you need to bring it up a little. And you can nail it. And when you're done, just click OK. Now we're not done, but this is like, you know, step one <laughs> or step two. Step one was copy and paste the sky. Step two was come here. We just have a very minor hey, step hey, three. Scott. Real quick, there's a question. Yes, there. So when you copy and paste and you have different color profiles, it's going to come up with a dialog box that says, do you want to match the source or the destination? What should you do? Destination. Because, you know, yep. All right. There's a couple people asking that. So Yeah, match the destination. All right. Ready to roll? Yep. All right. We click OK. And generally... I think that the sky is generally a bit too bright, like in this case. So I would just go to the opacity, which is right here in the layers palette, just above your layer, straight up is the word opacity. Click right next to the 100% and a little slider pops down. There's a little arrow and then find a good spot for your sky and Bob's your uncle. Now there is one more thing that you could do. Does it look a little funky right here on the rocks? Yeah, it do. It looks a little funky down there. And also, I missed a little area down there. Easy enough to fix. But here's what we would do. At this point, I could flatten the image. Just click the little arrow uh, right up here, the little hamburger in the right corner. It's the 
three little, four little lines, click and choose flatten the image. And then you can use the trick you learned in the portrait session. Go get the history brush. What is history? Undo on a brush. Go back here and say, I want this to look exactly as it did when I opened the photo. Look, it all comes back. What? Yep. Any discoloration, any weird thing in the rocks, you can just replace it by painting over it. And there you go. I, I got aggressive with my painting and just painted outside. I'll just hit undo. There we go. Sorry. And got it. Now, the last thing is, what about that stupid little corner over there? What about that stupid corner? Well, there's a million ways to fix this. Let's get the lasso tool and say, I want to select that area right there. Just don't even have to be real good about it. Just select it like that. So it's not a perfect selection. It's kind of a wide one. And just go choose, edit, fill, and what should be already selected? Content aware when it comes up. Content aware. You're going to click OK. And it's going to fill in that area like a boss. So that is an easy, easy way to do some sky replacement. All right, so let's, I'm going to undo that so I can just throw that sky away because we'll come back in a minute to it. I have another technique for you. If you want to open up another image, let's go open up Smokey's Morning. Smokey's Morning. It has its own theme song. It's such a great shot. How horrible is this? Not a cloud in the sky. There's sunrise. You know what a sunrise like that does? It just gets brighter. There's no clouds. It looks terrible. You're never going to show it to anyone. <laughs> it goes in the dustbin. That's what Eric and I would call an Arizona slash Utah sky. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's then great we're going to Milky go... Way photography. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For Milky Way photography, it'd be lovely. All right. Let's go to open. We're going to open up our second image. We're going to choose. Monument Valley sky and open that one. That's a better sky. That's in Utah as well. That's where Monument Valley has been for quite a while. Every once in a while it relocates, but that's pretty much its home. You know what's messing this photo up, Eric? What's that? It's those buttes. <laughs> Stinking buttes. 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 What if we were to make a selection around the butte and did the fill and chose content aware and then we clicked OK. Look, we got some butte help. Let's get rid of this big butte. Same thing. Fill. Content aware. And yes, I know there's a quicker way to do this for everyone in the chat that's going, why is he using that shortcut? Okay, the shortcut, if you have just an image, it's not on a layer. It's just to, if you see the word background and that's the only thing there, you can hit the delete key and it will bring up the content aware fill for you. Hit OK. It wasn't perfect, but it wasn't terrible. Now, I'm going to select as much of the sky as I can with my rectangular marquee tool, this one up here, top right of the uh, toolbar is the word I'm looking for. Yes, toolbar. Select that whole top right, and we're going to copy it. Copy and paste. You know the routine. Go to Smokey's Morn and hit paste a Rooney. Now let's just drag it up. And we need to make it a little bigger. It's not quite the right size. So we would go to free transform. Don't you wish free transform was in Lightroom? Like, wouldn't that be a great thing? Okay, back to our story. <laughs> Grab the corner, hold the shift key, and or just actually drive the corner and make it a little bigger than the horizon line. And I'm going to drag it back this way just because that cloud looks pretty cool. Okay. 
And there's your composite. You're done. And look how realistic it looks. Okay. Perfect. It's not done, but it's so you're like a click or two away from being done. So there's a number of ways to do this. One is to just go choose a blend mode. Let's try overlay. See how that looks. Look, it's not bad. It just blends right in. Now you, you see a hard line down there, but we're going to fix that. Let's look at multiply. Very dark and dramatic. Let's look at soft light. Little different. You can just scroll through. Ooh, look at hard light. But there's that hard edge down there. That's what the issue is. Let's go back to normal. Let's just leave it at normal. Here's how we're going to get rid of the hard edge. Three clicks. Easy, easy stuff. Click number one is the third icon at the bottom of the layers panel. The layer mask icon, we've used it numerous times today. Click on that. Click number one. Boom. Click number two, you're going to get the gradient tool. Oh, well, actually, click number two would be make sure black and white are your foreground colors. Press the letter D and make sure that's not happening. And then, and if, if that doesn't work, you can use the little arrows. Just click on them. Get the gradient tool. Here comes the fun. With the gradient tool, been in Photoshop, by the way, since Photoshop 1.0, 30 something years. Click at the bottom of your, just above the bottom of your sky and drag up a little, maybe an inch and let go. And it blends the bottom nice and smooth and perfectly. And there's your new sky. Ta -da. Now, once you've done the blending, you can change the blend mode. See if any of them look better to you. Click on the word normal and go down the list. Now, if you have a very old version of Photoshop, you'll have to click them one by one. You'll have to go multiply, which doesn't look bad, by the way. And then try color burn. And then try linear burn. <laughs> and just work your way down the list. If you have a current version of Photoshop, then you can just move your cursor down one at a time and you'll see each one live as a preview. That one actually doesn't look too bad screen. It doesn't, you know, if you want that lighter look. That looks terrible. Overlay looks great. Soft light looks great. Hard light looks really dramatic. And now it doesn't look so bad because you have that nice smooth blend at the bottom. Vivid light, linear light, pin light, hard mix, different ones. Those look really all awful. I'm going with overlay or hard light, depending on how, how hard you want to go. I think overlay probably. And then, of course, you can control the intensity a bit. You could... Lower the opacity a little if you want, make it blend in a little better, or leave it full. Now, you can see there's a little tiny sliver of a moon there. That's kind of lame, right? Let's go get an Eric Kuna style moon. Go under the file menu, folks, and grab that shot I called, ready? Moon. Moon. <laughs> moon. We're going Kuna style, but I did not actually have to ask Mr. Kuna for a moon, though he has some stunning moon shots. I've got my own moon. Dude, I brought my own moon. <laughs> Go ahead and open it. And we're going to need to select just the moon. How do you do that? Well, there's a tool for that. It is the elliptical marquee tool. So the circular marquee tool right there. And how are you going to select this? Well, Here's what to do. Hold the shift key so it's round, but it's not going to hit the right place. And you're going to keep trying and trying and all. Here's the secret. Here's what I do. Don't just hold shift. Hold shift option, and then you can drag from the middle. And you still won't be right. How do you fix it while you're still holding those two keys? Ready? Put your thumb on the space bar, and then you can move it. 
as you're dragging and you can make a perfect selection of the moon. So you hold shift to make it a perfect circle. You hold option and then you click in the middle of the moon and it drags out in a perfect circle, but it's never going to be perfect. So while you're holding shift and option, if you're on a Mac or shift and alt, if you're on windows, while you're moving it, take your thumb and put it on the space bar, bang, and now you can move it wherever you want. And you can still drag it and resize it. Works beautifully. There's the moon. I got the moon. How are we gonna get the moon into our photo? Copy. Go to our photo. And hit paste. Now, it looks kind of stupid, just stuck there. Here's what you're going to do. Ready? Drag it to the layer below. And now, now it's getting masked by that layer. It's, it's a little large here, I think. And there, plus you have two moons, so, you know. But you could kind of put it back there. Lower the opacity a bit so it's not so ridiculous looking. And you'll have to get rid of the other moon, too. The other moon's stupid. Get rid of that. But it's also very, very large. So let's make it, let's use free transform and make it smaller. Stick it somewhere else. Oh, don't forget. I, I actually, when I made it smaller, I uh, made it more of a football. Not good. So put your moon wherever you want. There it is. Moon over Miami. When you're done with your moving your moon around and it's on the layer below, flatten the image. And to get rid of the old, actual, real moon, get the spot healing brush. Looks like a Band-Aid with a circle coming out of it. Move it over the other moon, make your brush a little bigger, and just click once. Bye-bye, real moon. Hello, fakey moon. There you go. Little compositing Arunio. Now, I do want to leave you with one thing. There is a plugin and they did not ask me to show this. I'm going to show it because I use it. <laughs> that does sky replacement in a really brilliantly crazy, scary way. Let's go to the rock tree. Here's what it does. It's called, go into the filter menu. You have to buy it. It's not part of Photoshop. It's a buy. I think it's about, what is it, Eric? 79, 89 bucks, something like that? Yeah, something like that. It's a, it's a one-time purchase and you own it. Mm -hmm. Go under sky. Sky Lum and choose Luminar 4. It's called Luminar. It's a special effects plugin and it does amazing stuff. But its sky replacement technology is the boss. One reason it's so good is it because it comes with its own practice skies. It's got a whole bunch of skies that you can stick in there. You're about to see some crazy stuff. All right. Let's go give it a shot. So once you're inside of Luminar, you're going to click the little artist palette over on the right. It says creative. So you know that you're about to do some crazy stuff. And there it is. AI sky replacement. And you see how it says sky selection? Which one do you want to use? How about a blue sky? That's it. <laughs> Just pops it right on in there. How about more of a sunset sky? Or perhaps a dramatic sunset, number two. I don't like that one. That's a bad one. How about dramatic sunset, number one? That's a much more compelling. But look how well it masks all the stuff. Why does it do such a good job? because it uses AI. That's right, we're gonna be replaced by robots. Anyway, hey, all right, you wanna get crazy? How about Galaxy? Yes, I remember that night well. <laughs> Wasn't it like that when we were there, Eric? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The sun peering down on the rocks while yes. the Milky well, that Way was was light totally visible. Eric. That was light painting. Oh, that was light painting. That's right. Sorry, That's right. I forgot. But you, okay, 
regardless, it's doing a pretty it's good still, job. It's still really good. I mean, and it is. It's eighty nine dollars right now. All right, it's, oh, it's eighty nine. Okay. Do you want to take it a step further? Can I take it a step further, Eric, just for fun? Yeah, do it. Look right below it. Sun rays. Ooh. So the sun rays thing, you get to place the sun center, decide where you want your sun, how much of the sun rays that you want in your shot. You can choose all kinds of, like, it goes into advanced settings. You got uh, how much of a radius, how warm do you want the sun, how yeah, you can do all this crap, but what but watch this. Watch this. Oh, let me I have to go back to it. Hang on. You can actually move the sun center and watch. It masks behind the tree. Look at that. <laughs> Come on. It's crazy. That is that's too much cheating. There there is a line. I'm not sure there is, but Anyway, I just wanted to show you that because I think it's kind of cool. All right. Well, folks, there you have it. Go and get that free class. It goes into much, much more uh, detail than I do. There's all kinds of different projects and all kinds of different ways. And you'll see all kinds of different things through it. Uh, but we wanted to give you that uh, to keep keep you learning because, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful. And I know Eric is that you guys joined us today. Uh, and I know some of you are already Kelby One members, so thanks to you guys. And for those of you who aren't, welcome aboard and thank you for joining us today. We're doing these about once a week, so I hope you'll attend the next one or go back and look at some of the ones that we've already done. We've done uh, how to back up your uh, photos, how to back up your catalog, how to back up all of your photos. We've done a whole thing on sending your prints to a print lab. So we've done a number of these different uh, webinars and continue to do them You know, while we're in this stupid virus thing. And uh, we're, we're very anxious for it to get, to get over and get on with our lives. But while we're all together like this, I think this is a great way to keep us moving forward. Any more comments or questions, Mr. Kuna? Uh, so there was one that I uh, got texted. It was about, um, let, me, let me read it. It was, um, how do you deal with different pixel densities in different parts of your composite? I, I'm not sure what that question means. I think that's one of those where uh, my my answer would be I think we're overthinking it at that point. If we're dealing with yeah, like I'm... like yeah, I mean I think if you're getting down to that if it looks bad, it's bad. You know you have to get a higher <laughs> resolution image. Well, um, well said. If it looks good, then don't worry about it because I think sometimes we can as photographers really overthink those things. Ooh, we're um, famous for overthinking because that's, things. And that's the thing like we're talking about with this is like I I'm the same way. Uh, I felt like for so long I can't do these things to my image because it's, I mean, that's not real, that's fake. But when you find out that probably every photographer that's in those that galleries and, and and those ones that are, are getting those jobs that you dreamed of, um, they're doing it. And you're like, well, wait a minute, if they're doing it, I mean, you're just basically like handcuffing yourself. Yeah, but but go shoot your own skies. And by the way, Luminar well, lets absolutely. you use your own skies. But absolutely. but start doing that. Start thinking, okay, I need to start mm -hmm. shooting different skies at sunrise, at sunset, at you know, now's a great time to do it. You don't need to be around anybody to go shoot skies. So go shoot some skies and get some get a catalog, get a big folder of skies. You don't want to use the same sky again and again like the woman on on Instagram that got busted putting the same sky in every photo. That was awesome. Yeah. But anyway, start shooting your skies, put a, a big folder room together and, you know, and also look at the direction of the light, how it's hitting the clouds to make sure you don't need to flip the clouds, just like we flipped our portrait subject earlier. So there's all that. All right. Any last comments or questions, Mr. Kuna? No, just everybody's uh, loving it. Again, reminder to everybody that this will be up in the webcast replay. Uh, we post that in the chat, but if you go to the member site, you go under the, um, uh, learn menu, then go down to webcast. That's where all those webcasts are. Um, we archive every one of them. So like I said, uh, and like Scott said, uh, anyone that we've done is in there. Uh, anyone we've done forever is in there. So you can go back to the oldest ones we have in there as well. So check it out. Also, I hope you'll join me and Eric uh, on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Uh, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, we have a live photography show that we do called The Grid. And uh, we 
pick a photography topic every week. Once a month, we do blind photo critiques where we ask our viewers to send in their photos and we give them honest critiques. That was unfortunately last week's episode. Uh, so it'll be another you know three or four weeks before we do it again. But uh, we will be live tomorrow at four o'clock. Everyone's invited. It's free and open to everybody always. Even when there's not a virus, it's free and open to everyone. So uh, anyway, but thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Eric. Yes, thank you, and Scott. Also that thanks was awesome. To Jason uh, and Ron, who are helping us on the technical side of all this as we broadcast from different locations. So thanks to them. And I know keep, they put a lot of Keep our batteries this. charged for us. Keep notice our batteries that, charged. Notice yeah. that our batteries are, are not charged. I got an 62% now, so that was, that was a good call. Yep. Yep. So and thank you, Mr. Kuna. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks to all of you. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Stay the heck away from everybody. We'll see you next week. See you guys.